Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery, Part 402. We are starting a new lesson series on the fall of the Fourth Empire. We've been talking about the rise of the Fourth Empire, the things that would go into <clears throat> enabling the Fourth Empire to <clears throat> dominate all things. Now we're look, going to look at the demise of the Fourth Empire. Based on one main principle, that is the completion of the Father's plan. At the completion of the Father's master plan, he'll have no need for the Fourth Empire. His main focus will be judgment on all that have stood in opposition to him and his people. <clears throat> the Father is working on two basic principles. Scripture teaches the Father's master plan involves the adoption to the fullness of sonship of his sons. That's what he's currently working on moving to a conclusion, the fullness of sonship, which is experienced in the adoption, <clears throat> which takes place, of course, at the rapture. The other aspect of this <clears throat> is the defeat of the enemies of his only begotten son. Now, the Son is begotten into the Prototokos. The sons are adopted into the Prototokos. We see this illustrated in the book of Psalms, second chapter, verse 7. Psalm 2nd chapter, verse 7. I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Now people look at this scripture, not having the faintest understanding of it, and try to say, well, <coughs> Jesus is a created being. No. What it's saying is, <coughs> in the Father's plan in eternity for the sons. His plan included a race of sons called the brethren. The head of this race would be the mold for every son. Of course, the head of this race would be his son, <coughs> his only begotten son from eternity. But the race of the brethren had to have the begettal of his son to initiate the race. That's why you hear this conversation taking place at the time that the Lord ascends back to present himself before the throne of the Father as a completion of the Father's plan for the Prototokos. The father expresses his pleasure. You are my son. This day have I begotten. You're the first of the race of the brethren. He is begotten. We are adopted because we started off as created beings. He did not. We can never become begotten because we had a beginning. But we can become adopted, which means we experience the fullness of sonship. Okay. So even though that conversation, as you just described, takes place at the ascendance of Christ mm -hmm. back to the Father, mm -hmm. the resurrection happened how, how long before? Same day. Okay, all right. 
in which case then he's resurrected it answers my question. meets Mary <coughs> says don't touch me haven't ascended to my right. father right I was thinking about the period of time between the resurrection and the ascendance but it's the same day so that makes sense so the father's plan is progressing the first phase is completed we're entering into the ending of the second phase that is things leading to the adoption <clears throat> when that takes place then the father will proceed to <clears throat> orchestrate the dismantling of the fourth empire. Turn to Psalms 110, verse 1. Psalms 110, verse 1. <clears throat> The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. <clears throat> so, this is, talk, this is a conversation that continues at the same time as the Lord declares him begotten. <clears throat> he says, My plan is progressing. Your work is done. Rest at my right hand until my plan is completed. My plan centers around the adoption of the, of the sons and the judgment on your enemies. Now people look at this from a human perspective and they confine it to the human existence. Well, that's not so because <coughs> if <coughs> Now, the human race were the center of God's judgment, he would never have sent Christ in the first place. He makes provision that humanity does not remain an enemy. The scripture tells us before we had a relationship, we were enemies. Now we're reconciled. The human race only is an enemy because it chooses to be an enemy. <clears throat> Those who have wisdom realize they can see the handwriting on the wall. They can see the opportunity of eternity, sonship. They take advantage of it. The enemies don't focus, don't center on the human race. They center on the enemies of eternity that have stood in opposition to the Lord. And we want to take a look at some things dealing with this. Scripture indicates the main enemies of Christ are the gods who revolted against him in the first place. They haven't been judged. Yes. They've only been <clears throat> um, positioned in a way in which they can't progress beyond what the Father allows them to progress. But judgment hasn't been leveled on them yet. But you remember when the Lord Jesus speaking to the man who had the demonic lesion in him. Mm -hmm. He says, have you come to torment us before the time? No, their time hasn't come yet. Those are the enemies right. of Christ. Turn to Deuteronomy 32. We see an example of this. Deuteronomy 32, verses 16 to 17. They provoked him to jealousy. Who was the they and who was the him? The humans and white reaction. No. <laughs> the gods and YHVH. The gods the provoked the humans. The humans didn't do it on their own. They're under the influence. Okay. All right. Well. 
as we see, he's not looking at the humans, he's looking at the gods. Agreed, but it says with strange gods, that's what you mean. Yes. Yeah. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abomination provoked they him to anger. The humans are manipulated to come under the influence of intelligences. Why? Notice what they go on to say. <clears throat> they sacrificed unto devils, demonian, not to God, capital G-O-D. Now this in the, in the initial refers to YHVH, but in the overall it's referring to Elohim. The gods that provoke the humans <coughs> to anger through worshiping them are revolting against the Father, not Elohim, because they know the Father. The humans only know Elohim. <coughs> they sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. So this is one of the things that is angering the Father. These guys are going to experience tremendous affliction because they knew what they were doing. Yeah. They're appropriating worship to themselves that should go to the Creator. Mm -hmm. Knowingly, deliberately. So then, it's curious that the Father allows the beast, number eight, to appropriate that same worship for himself as a way of judging the humans. I guess because he's then going to judge the beast for being so stupid in the He first. does it as a judgment. Mm. For he allows the beast to have power mm. <coughs> to shake his fist at him for a purpose. And that purpose is stated. He says, so that those that follow him may be damned that they may experience the maximum punishment. He's not content with them just entering into hell on a certain level. He wants them to feel the fullness that a human can experience. Why? Because he's fed up with the rejection aspect of the human race. Let's go on. <clears throat> Scripture indicates The enemies of God are the gods who revolted against him. Turn to Zephaniah, second chapter, verse 11. Zephaniah, second chapter, verse 11. The Lord will be terrible unto them, for he will famish all the gods of the earth. What does the word famish mean? It comes from a Hebrew term, raza, which means waste away. He's going to waste away their life source. <clears throat> he will famish all the gods of the earth and men shall worship him. Everyone from the place, from his place, even all the isles of the heathen. So he's going to take back <clears throat> the worship. Now when it talks about the this word here, men, it's talking about the non-humans who have been under the influence also of the gods all this time. They are again going to have freedom to worship the true God. Remember, it says the whole creation groans together in pain. 
they're I mean, given they're given <clears throat> the prototype guests elders are given authority over the nations to break them with a rod of iron you break them with a rod of iron they're going to come submissively into worshiping the true God. these men of the isles mm -hmm. are they of the same species or same race as the princes of the waters different races okay different races that were put on the earth during the luciferian before the luciferian before, time all right <clears throat> so the, the word famish there means it's going to drain their life force from them and <clears throat> they're going to experience the same thing that men experience when they die turn to psalms 82 verse 6 to 7 I have said ye are gods, and all of you are the children of the Most High. You can never say that about a human unless he's born again. A child of the Most High. A child of sure. the Most High. So it's not referring to humans, it's mm -hmm. referring to the Luciferians. But ye shall die like men. The word men there is Adam. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and fall like one of the princes. How is that they die like men? They're going to have their life force drained. The same way a human is, his life force drained to death. And <clears throat> the spirit goes into the subterranean regions bereft of the ability to function. The, um, the nature of the individual becomes totally... Um, limited to the environment of torment in which it's in. It says they lose anger, they lose emotion of what they had before, desire, mm -hmm. in other words. And the only thing that's left is this experience of the soul to receive torment. The, the, the scripture says the dead know nothing, they know not, they don't worship God, they don't have the ability to do so. All they have the ability to is to remember the right. wrong and the understanding of why they're suffering mm -hmm. for the wrongs that they did. And that's going to be eternal. That's why it means when it says life, they're bereft of life. That life writes them off. Uh, God forgets them that they ever existed mm -hmm. they are turned out of life so if you're turned out of life it means you can't experience any form of life all you're going to experience is a negative form of conscious existence terrible but that's what people are lining themselves up for Absolutely. turn to Jeremiah in the 10th chapter verse 11 <clears throat> Thus shall you say unto them, <clears throat> The gods that have not made the heavens and the earth, even they shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. So he's talking about <clears throat> they're all going to experience the same thing, but it, not at the same time. They're going to experience the draining of their power, of their life, and then they're going to be brought down to the level of earth or a level under the heavens that they once dwelt in to be brought 
to a imprisonment, a place of bondage. We see an example of this. Turn to Ezekiel 28, verses 14 to 18. Ezekiel 28, <clears throat> verses 14 to 18. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Talking about Lucifer. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, <coughs> until iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, <coughs> they have filled the midst of thee with violence. Thou hast sinned, therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, in the midst of the stones of fire. It's talking about the high place that he once occupied. The <clears throat> palatial estates that were his domain in the heaven of heavens. The paradise environment that it's all he ever knew. And then, given his power, given his authority, how he corrupted what was put within his hand to administer. Then it goes on. <clears throat> Verse 17. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore, I will bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. <clears throat> this is going to be the destiny of the gods, not just Lucifer. They're going to be <clears throat> made powerless in the heavens. Then they're going to be brought down to earth level and demonstrated before all people. And then <clears throat> they're going to be cast into a place of bondage. This is going to be the destiny of the gods. Mr. Jones, let me ask yes. you a question. Yes. Okay, so now we know that these gods that we just now got through reading about mm -hmm. were created to develop all the life forms. Mm -hmm. Will their skills of how to develop the life forms be translated to the sons of God? Or will we gather our understanding and our expertise from God our Father? Well, it comes from the Father, through the Spirit. It has nothing to do with these guys. These guys were never under us anointing of a son to begin with, the servants. But turn to Isaiah 24, verse 21 to 22. <clears throat> this principle is repeated. It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high, the gods, and the kings of the earth upon the earth. 
people like <coughs> the Luciferians under the beast, the individuals that have taken up residence on the earth and are dominating through the fourth empire on the earth. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners, are gathered in the pit, and shall be shut up in the prison. After many days shall they be visited. So they're going to be rounded up after they are done with. Their power is no longer resonant. They have died as men. Turn to Isaiah 14. Hang on a second. Let's talk about the word visited. Yes. By the Father or the Son? Son. Okay. Um, why? Because they're going to be loose at the end of the millennial period to go forth and trick man. Visitation doesn't mean from this respect to what you're thinking in today's terms. It's you're going to visit somebody in the hospital or in jail and have a conversation with this. It means basically that there's an appearance that's going to be made and that appearance is for a particular purpose, a particular uh, uh, event, effect that's going to happen to them. So is it going to be a delightful time for them? No. Of course not. Yes. Okay. Here we go. Isaiah 14. Verse 9 to 10, here you see the results of this. It takes place after this gathering. They're powerless and they're cast into the abyss. <coughs> Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. All, A-L-L, -L, all they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? They have been famished. Art thou become <coughs> like unto us? <coughs> These guys have gone through the meat grinder, God's meat grinder. And uh, m matter of fact, the next principle gives you an understanding of how he got to this place. Before... <coughs> They are cast into <clears throat> the abyss. Scripture teaches all humans and non-humans, every life form, every intelligence will be humbled before they leave this reality. They're going to be humiliated, humbled, brought down about as low as you can get before they're tossed into the prison. Turn to Isaiah 5, verse 15. Anybody that entertains pride is going to experience humility because God hates pride. And a prideful person is setting up his own downfall by exhibiting his pride. Isaiah 5, verse 15. And the mean man shall be brought down, and the mighty man shall be humble. Now what does this mean? The word mean comes from a Hebrew term, Adam. The word man comes from a Hebrew term, Adam. So it's saying the Adam, Adam, the Adamic being that YH, VH, instituted the race of Adam is what it's referring to shall be brought down human race is going to be humbled and the mighty man the word mighty comes from a Hebrew term ish the word man comes from a Hebrew term ish it's talking about a non-human the man man shall be humbled and the eyes of the lofty the word lofty there 
comes from a Hebrew term, Gaboah, which means high. It's talking about the Luciferian gods. Shall be humbled. But the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment and guide that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness. Today, people don't have respect for God because Christians have led them to disrespect God. <clears throat> but there's going to come a time when the fear of God is going to be from one end of this creation to the other. And <clears throat> a judgment is going to come on all that have the temerity to be prideful <clears throat> because in hell there is nobody who has pride. Pride doesn't exist in hell. It just doesn't. Whether you're human or non-human. We just read Isaiah 14. These guys are like jello on the wall. Uh, turn to Revelation, 20th chapter. During the tribulation period, yeah, Lucifer is going to strut his stuff. He's going to swagger back and forth and demand everybody acknowledge him who he is and his beauty and his pride along with the beast but before it's over <clears throat> before it's over Revelation 20 verse 1 and I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key the bottom of his pit and a great chain in his hand and he laid hold on the dragon that old serpent which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years this angel has absolutely no opposition from the enemy mm -hmm. from Satan why because he's just experienced e e Ezekiel 28 from totally drained yeah. Mason Take him down with one hand. Mason could take me down with one hand. <laughs> <laughs> so this angel, you know, this is uh, it says an angel. This isn't a mighty my, angel like Michael or anybody else. This is the janitor. Right. Comes, you know, like the guy after the party. He comes and sweeps up the right. refuge. Uh, this guy is Satan is jello. Gets wrapped up, bundled up, <laughs> thrown into God's trash can for a thousand years <clears throat> and when he hits the bottom of the bottom of his pit this is the reception everybody looks at him and says is this is this Lucifer can't be <clears throat> and says he's going to be a gazing stock <clears throat> if Jesus was humiliated at the cross you can imagine the 10 to the 10th power humiliation yes. that Satan is going to experience. Now we'll close. Turn back to Isaiah 10, verses Behold the Lord, the Lord of hosts, Jesus, shall lop the bow with terror. What does that mean? The word lop means lop off, cut off. The word bow comes from a Hebrew term pura, which means branch. The word terror comes from a, a Hebrew term Marasa, which means terrifying power. So what it's saying is the Lord is going to cut off the branch with terrifying power. And the high ones of stature shall be hewn down. And the haughty shall be humbled. And he shall cut down the thickets of the forest with iron and Lebanon shall fall by a mighty one. What is he referring to? Lebanon is the name of... <clears throat> yeah, he's a 
White Mountain, Holy Mountain, it's talking about God's government, the Luciferian government, the, the cedars of Lebanon that still exist. All of them are going to be humble. All of them are going to be cut down to ground level, humiliated, bundled up, and then thrown into a prison to await judgment. Nobody escapes. Nobody <clears throat> is going to be able to get out from under the judgment he's brought on himself, whether human or non-human. I don't care how low or how high. A homeless person out here is going to be judged according to the life that he lived. <clears throat> People that fly high and think that they're above the law are going to find that they're not flying high enough and they can't get over God's law. They're going to find out too late. <clears throat>